that's what our sport's all about is new tricks and progression and all that so you definitely if you come out with something that no one's ever seen before or ever heard of or tried to do it's gonna pay off beyond you know, anything let's name the 2010 U.S. Snowboarding Olympic Half-Pipe Team! The American Snowboarding Half-Pipe Team is being introduced after the final qualifying event. And a face that everyone expected to see on stage isn't here. Kind of the route that I'm taking is, you know, to really try and take care of my body because that's usually what ends it for most people is injuries and, you know, just not being able to keep at that level. Instead, Kevin Pierce, an Olympic hopeful, is 30 miles away at the University of Utah Medical Center, recovering from a traumatic brain injury. Weeks earlier, on this same half pipe, Pierce was injured while practicing this trick, the double cork, two backflips and three twists. That was Sean White, defending Olympic gold medalist doing the double cork. But even White, the world's best, struggles to master the latest tricks. White has raised the bar for Half Pipe's assortment of daredevil stunts. Competitors, like Pierce, are pushing themselves to catch up. But it's not just snowboarding. For about 20 years, the International Olympic Committee has infused the Winter Games with sports aimed at attracting a younger and broader television market. In other words, sports with elements of danger and risk. In the last 25 years, the size of the Winter Olympics has doubled to 86 medal events. Short track speed skating arrived in 1992, as did the freestyle skiing event of moguls. Aerials were added in 1994, and snowboarding arrived in 1998. The headfirst sledding sport of skeleton joined the program in 2002. In 2006, snowboarding's popularity led to the new discipline of snowboard cross, where several riders raced down the mountain at once. And this year, the ski version of that high-flying collision-filled sport will make its Olympic debut. Talk about made for TV, a festival of speed, amplitude, twists, and turns. And more than ever, crashes. To the front, it is O.J. Arsowski. We head off the head for the next one. Represent the United States at the Olympic Games. Even some who reached Vancouver overcame serious injuries, including short track speed skater J.R. Selsky. I was um, taking a corner in the last 500, and uh, the last lap actually, and, and I lost my footing on my right. So I tried to set my left down, but it also gave out. So I went into the boards, feet first. Imagine if the boards are right here. And the way I hit, the blade was actually forced in like this. It wasn't like a slice, it was actually a stab. So it was stuck in there like this, and I looked down, blood everywhere, yeah. Big, uh, big cut, big gash. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be alive, actually, because it was a pretty, pretty close to death experience. To protect from the razor-sharp 17-inch blades, speed skaters wear suits lined with cut-resistant Kevlar. The areas that is covered by Kevlar is like the most important. Is it covers our femoral arteries, and then um, our it runs actually behind our knee. You can see the gray patch right here, and then underneath our armpits. Um, is another area too. Also, we have a, a neck guard that's made of Kevlar as well to protect our jugulars. However, suits are only lined in certain spots to minimize weight and to maintain an aerodynamic profile. But many skaters choose to wear the bulkier, full Kevlar underlining. If I was wearing the, the Kevlar suits, and most other countries do, then I, it probably would have prevented the injury, and, and I definitely wear that now that the injury happened. But while technology has made the athletes safer, it's also made them go faster and fly higher. The walls for snowboarding's half pipe have consistently climbed in height. For these Olympics, they're 22 feet. Ski courses are built almost entirely of man-made snow, injected with water to create super slick, ultra hard ice to withstand weather and competition. And sliding tracks, once simply carved in the snow, are now designed on computers and built for speed. There's little doubt that the IOC got what it wanted when it added a new generation of events, an increase in wow factor. That not only attracts TV viewers, but it also attracts Olympians themselves. I feel like it's uh, one of the best and the coolest sports to watch. I know I was intrigued before I started doing it. That's why I actually came over to ice skating. 
I'll have flashbacks. Like I felt a couple times since I've been back and it just brings me back to that moment. Us as speed skaters have to realize is that we can get cut seriously. So it's no reason to not do it.